Today on Xenia Jilidan, something a little different, one of my friends dropped off this TV that seemed to do nothing except have the power light change colors when I pressed the power button. So I took out one of my laser pointers to check the actual LCD panel and it didn't seem to work. So I thought I'm going to use the screen for a little experiment and that was to take out the white LEDs from the backlight and replace them with red, green, and blue LED strips. It was an interesting project. My first objective was to remove the actual LCD panel from inside of the TV, which involved removing all the screws that held the back to the front of the TV together. Some screws along the bottom also had to be removed, along with the screws and cables that held the board to the display driver in the back of the TV. Removing the screws around the outside of the TV was a pretty easy task. However, I had to also be extremely careful while removing all the screws on the bottom and being careful with this little board. This board had four little ribbon cables which contained multiplexing processor. And once that was disconnected from the driver board and all screws were removed, I was able to flip it over and remove the front panel of the TV. You'll also notice that on the left side of your screen there are also two little multiplexing processing chips as well, held on by one ribbon cable. Once all the ribbon cables were freed up and the LCD panel was removed, it was time to get the business. Underneath the LCD panel, there are a few pieces of plastic held on by a plastic bracket. These pieces of plastic help spread the light across the LCD panel more evenly. The only thing keeping me from the LEDs at this point was this white reflecting plastic on the back. Once I had gained access to the LEDs, I inspected them, and they looked very discolored. They're supposed to be a bright white. They look pretty burnt. While removing the LEDs from the back of the TV assembly, I also took time to grab a small black light to check to see if the LEDs had a special phosphorus coating on them. However, seeing absolutely no signs of glow, I definitely ruled out that these LEDs were completely toast. After fully removing the LED strips and all wiring, it was time to cut out a piece of plastic for the back. For this project, I chose to cut out a piece of white plastic. This will help reflect the light back up towards the screen a little more. I'm using 50-50 LEDs that are red, green, and blue. The density is 60 per meter. Out of this five meter roll of LEDs, I was able to get about eight equally sized LED strips. Once all my LEDs were in place, it was time to solder them. I used all white wiring for this because I did not want the color of the wire to be reflected up into the TV screen. Each LED strip is soldered in parallel with the colors individualized so that way I could control them with the LED controller I intended to use. You'll also note that the spacing on the LED strips is not perfect. Well, my answer to that is this is an incredibly cheap TV that I'll probably never actually end up really using. The things I noted on the screen were there were actually no X and Y refractive filters, so it really cut down on the quality of how I could spread the light around, and I didn't feel like cutting my own. Another problem with these LEDs is they did not have the little plastic diffusion caps that normally come on the LEDs inside of the TVs. After a quick test on my ATX power supply, we can clearly see that all the LEDs work. Here is the positive wire along with the red, green, and blue wire connected up to the small 3-key LED controller that I have connected up to an ATX power supply for testing. After reinstalling the LCD panel, it was time to test it out and you can see there was actually an image on the screen which was cool. It was a no signal image but that was okay because I could change the colors and the speeds and the modes of the colors on the LCD panel which is pretty cool. There were a couple of drawbacks. The LEDs weren't quite as even as I would like them to be and there were dark corners and of course the no signal screen. After putting the TV screen back together, I decided to hook it up to my laptop and use the Windows Media Visualization coming at ya. I was actually surprised to see how the screen looked in person. I know you can see some of the LED strips and the dark edges on the camera. However, in person, this was not so noticeable. I'm just going to press some of the features on the LED 3D controller, which include color, speed, mode, and brightness settings.
I really didn't take this little experiment of mine all too seriously, but I was still amazed at how it changed the background image on my desktop. I mean, it just, it completely morphs. And that is an incredibly strange looking TV. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. If you like this little experiment of mine and want me to continue to figure out how to get the most color out of a regular cheap LCD screen, I have two more TVs of which to experiment on as well, a 36 inch and a 55 inch. If you want me to do some experiments on how to get the most color out of those, please let me know and I'll do more videos on how to do that and post those up. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy DIY projects, science and experiments, well, I do too. So I recommend subscribing to my channel if you want to see more. Check out some of my other videos of which I have done some other experiments on as well. And as always, stay tuned for more.